Who would win in a fight? Superman or Dr. Manhattan? But Benny, oh great and mighty comic historian, they already did the fight in the pages of Doomsday Clock. But let me ask you, my dear viewer, did they? From the very beginning of the series, we were given clues that Superman and Dr. Manhattan would meet this epic showdown that would shake the very core of both universes. We did, sort of. The battle itself did not come down to trading blows. It came down to the ideology of difference, of hope versus apathy. While Superman did go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the strongest villains in the DC Universe, led by the anti-ish hero Black Adam, he and Dr. Manhattan had a discussion on what it means to be a hero and help people. Dr. Manhattan saw a future where an angered Superman was coming for him, and this turned into Superman hitting Pozar right next to Dr. Manhattan's face. At what point did the two actually come to blows? So while the story did teach Manhattan what it was like to once again be human and sacrifice himself, we still have the question, who would win in a straight up fight? Let's meet our contenders. Introduced in Watchmen number one, Dr. Manhattan was based on Captain Adam and is the only true superhero of the Watchmen universe. He gained his powers when John Osterman was trapped in the intrinsic field testing chamber. Though it seemed like he had disintegrated, John reassembled himself and became known as Dr. Manhattan. He began to work for the US government, becoming the ultimate nuclear deterrent and helping them win the Vietnam War. As time went on though, John became more and more distant from humanity and what it actually meant to be human. In terms of powers, John is pretty much all-powerful within the Watchmen universe. He has the ability to split himself into multiple copies, all which function as his one true self at the same time. He's invulnerable. He has the ability to perceive the past, present, and future. This allows him to see possible futures and their outcomes. He can perceive the very nature of the universe and its building blocks, being able to create things from nothing and pierce into other dimensions. What this basically means is that he can do anything. He can time travel. He can fly reconstruct himself, destroy people and objects, and then simply reconstruct them, move things with his mind and teleport himself and others. Really what it boils down to is that Dr. Manhattan can literally do anything that is required of him. Now for decades, people have been saying that Superman is overpowered. Yet next to Dr. Manhattan, the guy is practically powerless. First appearing in Action Comics number one in 1938, Superman was sent to the earth as a baby in a rocket ship named Kal-El. He was the last son of the dying planet of Krypton, adopted by two loving parents. Clark grew up with a strong sense of right and wrong and became Superman to protect his adopted home. He can fly, he has super speed, super strength, super breath, heat vision, x-ray vision, and he's invulnerable. Superman's one true weakness is the radiation of kryptonite, which weakens him and can be used to kill him. So in order to discuss this battle, we're not going to discuss what could have brought them into the fight because as Doomsday Clock showed us, they're more likely to have a conversation than start hitting each other. Let's just say that all of the conversation has ended and for whatever the reason, Superman is now rushing at Dr. Manhattan with the goal of putting him down. Okay, I'm going to get this out of the way now, and I know it doesn't matter because you're all going to yell at me in the comments. Anyway, I love Superman. I have ever since my father first introduced me to the character, and he's had some great stories. Yet in a straight fight, both of them at their maximum power levels, Dr. Manhattan would utterly destroy Superman. Don't get me wrong, Superman would do his best, but he just can't stand up to this guy. All Dr. Manhattan would have to do is blink him out of existence. Or let's say that he's feeling generous. He could simply rewrite Superman's genetic code so that Superman doesn't have any powers. Or that the sun would have the same effect as kryptonite on him. He could just make it so that Krypton exploded a few seconds earlier and the rocket ship didn't even have time to take off. Or make it so that Jor-El and Laura didn't even have kids and kal was never born. The fact of the matter is that Dr. Manhattan is overpowered as hell. He is less of a character and more of a plot device, a deus ex machina with a face. In Watchmen, Ozymandias' plan works because John doesn't care enough about humanity to stop it. In Doomsday Clock, he messes with the DC Universe so much and their real life release schedule that he has rewritten so much and only fixes everything and saves his own universe when Superman reminds him of what it means to be human and a person. So realistically, as much as I want to discuss how a fight between these two heroes would go, there's no way that Superman will be able to take out Dr. Manhattan in a fight. As he's rocketing towards him, any of these events could have happened. Or, you know what? Dr. Manhattan just stands there. Superman rockets to him, he rewrites his own DNA, and now he can withstand whatever Superman throws at him while he tries to talk him down. Now, if we had jumped ahead to Superman Prime in DC 1 million, maybe. And you're probably sitting there if you're not a comic book super fanatic like me going, who is Superman 1 million? 
Well, Superman Prime from the DC One Million book was introduced into Grant Morrison's DC One Million story arc. The idea is simple. Superman Prime had the same origin as standard Superman. Superman's Kryptonian DNA and powers made him immortal under the yellow sun. As time went on, those he cared for and loved began to die off, and eventually, Superman had to live in a world without his adopted mother, father, Lois Lane, or the friends that he served beside for decades. Near the end of the 21st century, Kal-El decided to retire and passed on the mantle of Superman to a second Superman, who was his heir, so it might have even been John Kent. It's kind of unclear in the storyline. Knowing that the Earth would be protected, Kal-El disappeared into space, traveling the universe. He would eventually return to Earth in the 700th century. During his sabbatical, he seemingly gained several new powers. Although it's never explained how this happened, it is possible that the radiations of different suns would give him different powers, like the difference between a red and yellow sun. No idea, I'm not a comic book scientist. Returning to Earth, Kal-El met his descendants and decided to share a portion of his power with them, which is apparently something he can do now. Giving them his new powers, Kal-El would then once again retire, but this time to his new Fortress of Solitude, which was located in the center of the sun. He remained inside of the sun for 15,000 years, and when he finally emerged, due to the past Justice League coming to the future to stop the evil Solaris, Superman Prime had become golden due to his time spent in the sun. He has knowledge of events that hadn't even happened yet, and apparently was able to resurrect Lois Lane. Superman Prime's powers are vague at best in the One Million story arc, but it is revealed that he has gained the ability of the fifth dimension. At this point, he most likely has Dr. Manhattan's power levels, if Dr. Manhattan had actually spent 15,000 years strengthening his power. Like Manhattan, Superman Prime has also lost touch with humanity at one point, but he managed to gain his humanity once again when Lois was reborn. Because of this, should the two fight, Superman Prime would most likely have to talk to Manhattan, showing him the error of his ways, not unlike how the regular Superman would have done it and did do it. If push comes to shove, Superman Prime would most likely just unmake Dr. Manhattan altogether. While I think we can agree no matter which version of Superman we're dealing with, he would just talk him down, if it really came down to it, I feel that Superman Prime would gain the aid of his friends to actually unmake the DNA that makes up Dr. Manhattan. The only chance that Dr. Manhattan may have against Superman Prime is since he also has the ability to see into the future and the past, he would do it before Superman Prime could. So honestly, I think at the end of the day, Superman Prime versus Dr. Manhattan with both of them basically having godlike powers or access to godlike powers as Superman Prime only was able to resurrect Lois Lane with a DNA sample and the aid of the Superman from the fifth dimension and our man and the abilities that he gained, I think it would just come down to who moves fastest. That's really what it would come down to at this point. So that is our discussion over what would happen with Superman, Superman Prime, and Dr. Manhattan all fighting. What do you think in the comments down below? Now that we've laid out these different versions of the characters, we've explained what they can do. And also, do you like this format of video? How could we clean it up? How could we make it better for you? This is the first time we're trying something like this, and we've got a whole bunch of them in the works that we want to bring out, like Red Hood versus The Punisher. What if we did Spider-Man versus Batman? You know, like things like that. Let us know what verses you want in the comments down below and let us know how we can improve this series. Thank you and I'll see you next time right here.